Oh, 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 sorry. Sorry for being so dry this morning, uh, but there's so much salt that's been tossed my way uh, thanks to Judicial Homicide, the folks behind the Slaughtering Grounds, one of 2014's worst games as voted for by me, Pro Jared and Angry Joe. Um, those folks, perpetual sore losers that they are, have just added Steam trading cards to their game, one of which is the Zombie Internet Troll. Uh, what they've done is they've taken the uh, stock Unity asset, because of course they have the fat ogre, not even a troll, and awkwardly twisted its arm, because they can't animate for shit, to uh, replicate my Russian roulette salute that I have for my YouTube profile, uh, which is just darling. Uh, and I, I think it's quite funny, um, but I do worry about just what a sore loser they are. I mean, just because I took the heel of my boot and ground your faces into the dirt once, or twice, or three or four times, uh, you know. There's no reason to take it so personally and keep perpetuating this animosity between us. Uh, I don't take it personally. I wish you all the best. In fact, I hope that Steam trading card does you a lot of a lot of business, as well as the price drop that you've just had to, to 99 cents. Uh, I really wish it all the best, and I hope that in some way I can help that. And I also hope you realise that any money, no matter how small, no matter what meagre amount of profit you scrape together for your game, is entirely thanks to Jim fucking Sterling's son. Steam recently implemented a new way for the money to flow, enabling folks to start charging for mods on Steam Workshop. The program debuts with Skyrim, which has already had a fair few modders opting to sell their content rather than serve it up for free, as has been traditional in the modding scene since, well, forever. The decision has caused a notable backlash, there's a popular petition asking for a reversal, and commenters everywhere are decrying the notion. As for me, well, I'm honestly very tall on this one. I've praised the modding scene in the past for its amazing work, work that can often put the actual paid professional developers to shame. Folks like Durant have actually had to step up and fix shitty ports of console games like the notoriously awful PC version of Dark Souls and the sorry work that went into Deadly Premonition. Mods have stepped in to fix or completely overhaul all sorts of games, from Stalker to Max Payne, keeping them updated and running on modern systems long after the companies selling them stopped supporting the products. It's very hard to argue that the modders who keep games working worth buying deserve absolutely zero compensation for the hard work they put into their craft. They keep games valuable long after the initial content is experienced, providing endless amounts of free shit. And yes, it's because they have a passion for what they do, and that in itself is a reward. But you're talking to a guy who makes his money doing shit he has a passion for, and it'd be damn hypocritical to say modders don't deserve the same opportunities. So, in principle, I'm for the idea of modders getting paid. In principle. In a contextless vacuum, I like the idea. This shit ain't happening in a vacuum, however, and while I'm totally in favour of content creators of all stripes getting cash for creativity, we can't pretend there aren't notable downsides to Steam Workshop's latest scheme. First of all, there's a perfectly understandable fear that the cynicism that has infected every other aspect of Steam won't bleed into the workshop. We've got plenty of evidence that there are hundreds of content creators waiting in the wings to exploit and abuse every outlet Valve has provided. Steam Early Access Access has been taken over by Unity Asset buying, pre-pre-alpha selling, overcharging, dishonest hacks who just take the piss. Steam Greenlight is infested with folks spending a hundred bucks to produce one-note joke sims and shitty Minecraft clones. The Steam front page store itself has an overwhelming avalanche of dishonestly presented, patently broken, low-quality games that have diminished the once notable prestige of getting a game on Valve service. The kind of shit that belongs on Newgrounds and Congregate but found their way onto Steam because Steam now lets rank amateurs sell Babby's first game project at a profit. And we're already seeing the abuse come to the workshop with things like horse genitals for $99. And then there's this shit. The modding scene is now at risk of turning just as contemptuous and saturated with cash-grabbing trash as every other part of Steam, which is a real shame. This move also risks turning mods into another form of DLC, something we already have quite enough of by now, thanks. Downloadable content has become a dirty term thanks to big publishers fucking the hell out of it, and I wonder if the market has room for yet more of it once the floodgates open here. And speaking of big publishers, how long will it be before the EAs and Ubisofts and Warners dip their greedy little fingers into this new potential source of revenue? Bethesda and Valve are set to take the lion's share of profit off this change, as is their right, but damn if it doesn't fertilise the ground for the DLC if 
gamification of mods. This is especially galling when a company can theoretically release a game with a bunch of problems, let a modder fix it all, and then make money off somebody else doing the shit they should have done from the start. I mean, Sky UI, considered an essential improvement by many PC Skyrim players, is getting a paid-for version that Bethesda will benefit from. This is also yet another part of Steam that Valve itself is going to claim no responsibility over while it sits back and lets the gold rush fill its coffers. Just as it washes its hands of early access in its own storefront, Valve is letting the community police the market, claiming no responsibility for the worse than horse armor third party DLC that could come to characterize the workshop. I've never been on board with Valve's hands-off approach, and while I understand, yes, the manpower and costs involved in policing such a huge open platform, well, well, it wasn't me who opened the fucking door and invited the vampires in, was it? Also, while it's easy to sit back and call gamers entitled for lashing out at this change, let's not pretend it's easy to rewire your brain into happily accepting a charge for something that was once free. I mean, the very idea of mods are that they're freely distributed by the community for the community. If you think customers should just suddenly shut up and be cool with that not being the case anymore, you might want to rethink how the human mind works. And yes, I know, Steam Workshop is not the only place to get mods, at least for right now. It's too early to tell, really, if there'll be a migration, either customers flocking to these other places or modders flocking from them. Even worse, there's potential for publishers to simply tell third-party sources they better march in lockstep with the workshop's method or face legal trouble. The legality of this is already a mess, with mods that require other mods to work at all, modders taking assets from other modders and charging for them. And what happens when an official game update breaks a mod? It's a fucking shit show. At any rate, it should be understandable why people see workshop's plan as a paywall and and little else. I think I most agree with those who say that if this does need to be the way Steam Workshop goes, a pay what you want model may at least have been a better option. Despite the portrayal of internet users as people who want everything free all the time forever, there's plenty of evidence, this show included, that a healthy contingent of gamers are prepared to open their wallets and support quality content they believe in. You just gotta actually, you know, give them something worth buying, which so many parasites on Steam over the past few years have failed to do. At any rate, there's been a ton of arguing online from people who are oversimplifying the issue. There are those proclaiming Valve's move is uniformly evil and any modder who opts into it is a sellout, and those claiming this is Valve's world and if we don't like it, we're spoiled brats. Truth is, it's a complex issue centered on a plan that is problematic at best and has the potential to further damn steam if it's handled as poorly as it's probably going to be. At the same time, I believe strongly in content makers getting the cash if they've made something worth selling, and I don't begrudge quality modders who've opted into the easiest method of achieving that. Let's be open to the idea of paying for mods that have given us a ton of entertainment, but let's not pretend Steam's implementation or its track record is anything to be comforted by. Before we go, I should point out that yes, I'm well aware that uh, Silent Hills has possibly been cancelled, that Hideo Kojima's name has been taken off the uh, uh, promotion for Metal Gear Solid 5, and that PT, the promotion for Silent Hills, has been removed from the PlayStation Network. Um, th that all came up this weekend, so that was a bit too late for us to do an episode on it right now, but I would like to just continue uh, the long belief that I've been talking about for years, that Konami are a bunch of petty fools who don't know how to business. Uh, so that's really par for the course for them. Um, I'm still waiting until we know a little bit more in solid detail about what the fuck's going on, but rest assured, we may have to be visiting Konami very soon. I say revisiting, obviously. Uh, the last video I did on them got me blacklisted from them because they're petty fools who don't know how to business. So thank God for them for being able to provide us with plenty of material as they sink into oblivion. And of course, thank God, uh, well, for me.